The Texas and Arizona Ecological Forecasting Headquarters. These sleuths use remote sensing and data analysis to help their clients get down to brass tacks when it comes to ecological mysteries. That's Daryl Ann Winstead. She's the team lead. There's Christina Fisher, analyzing data. And that's Kaushik Narasimhan, reading the newspaper. It was an ordinary day, just like any other day, when suddenly, there was a knock on the door. Can we help you, miss? Uh, yes, I, I think so. Um, my name's Amber Keith, and well, I was out looking for onslaughts the other day, and I couldn't find any. I, I went all to the places where you could find them, but it's been turned to urban and to agriculture. Are they all gone? I mean, they can't be possible, can it? No, ma'am, they aren't. But ocelots are elusive felines and are quite rare. Where might I look? Well, ocelots in the United States tend to live in extreme southern Texas and Arizona, so that'll be your best bet to start the search. Even so, these places have changed significantly over time. Urban development and agricultural growth have encroached upon the ocelot habitat which is closed canopy, thorn scrub bushes. Road development has been a significant impact on the ocelots, and vehicular accidents remain a major threat to them. Human encroachment has also been increasing since the early 1990s, so you should focus from then until the present. Can you help me? Of, of course. course! The team knew this would be a difficult task to take on, but luckily they had a couple of contacts in ocelot conservation who can help them get started. Dr. Michael Tuiz has been studying ocelots and other wild cats for nearly 30 years. The main drivers for habitat loss for ocelots in, in Texas is, is the increasing human population and the, uh, the development that comes along with that population. Some of the primary difficulties associated with ocelot conservation is the cost that would be involved to, to address the really important items. Items are creating more habitat or habitat restoration and trying to reduce ocelot mortality from road kills or ocelot underpasses. Both of these uh, endeavors are very expensive and, and they have to be done in the right locations. Terra Aster-based global digital elevation model data were downloaded from USGS Glovis to create stream networks within the study area using ArcMap. Terra Modis data were downloaded from the NASA LandWeb website to derive a normalized difference in vegetation index. Landsat 8 Ollie and Landsat 5 TM data were downloaded from USGS Glovis and were corrected for top of atmosphere, and then used to run a maximum likelihood classification. These layers were used in our studio in a maximum entropy model to derive a suitable habitat map. From this, habitat percent coverage and proximity to roads maps were created. What did you find? We just finished creating the maps where ocelots could be, as well as how far they are from roads. Here you go, ma'am. This is the cat's meow. Organizations such as the U.S. Fish and Wildlife can use this for conservation efforts, and the Texas Department of Transportation can use this for incorporating for crossing structures. Thank you so much. This can really mean the difference for the ocelots. It's not a problem, ma'am. It's all in a day's work. Now how about we all go grab a nice cup of joe? Let's go. Okay. She may not have found her ocelot that day, but the ecological forecasting team's work will help ensure that researchers and conservationists can find and protect ocelots in the future. Helping in the preservation effort of this rare cat was all the satisfaction they needed.